Hey applicants and potential applicants of CTC, we are here today to give you tips on how your application can cut through the noise and make it to Paniota. All right, we're joined here today um, by Richard and Adrian, two copywriters here at CTC um, who are both, let's see, Richard, you've been here almost a year? More yeah, getting a year? close to a year. Okay, right, right around a year. And Adrian, months. you've been about four months? Yeah, almost five. Almost five months. Those are good guesses by me. But um, <laughs> so what we want to do today, you know, we just recently put out a video saying that we are hiring um, for a bunch of open positions here at CTC and we've received a lot of awesome inbound. Um, of applications, people reaching out via various social platforms, some sliding in DMs, some jumping on LinkedIn, some hitting people up on Twitter. Um, and so we want to try and give some tips to people about the best mechanisms for cutting through the noise and getting an interview and ultimately a job here at CTC. So to do that, I've brought in two people to highlight some of the very different paths that you can go down to get a job here at CTC. So um, I'm going to let each of them tell their story and then we'll bat around some tips that are hopefully helpful for getting your application through to CTC. So first, RG3, as we, RG4, RG4 as we call him, <laughs> um, copywriter extraordinaire, Richard's going to give a little breakdown. How did you, what, well, first tell people what you were doing before you got here and then how you got your job here at CTC. Right, so, yeah, so my job immediately previous to this one was uh, working at a small factory that built church organs and I was uh, in charge of the carpentry and they were digital so I did electronics and wiring that kind of thing um, so, so not, not your normal predecessor like yeah, yeah, yeah. not the thing that normally precedes being a copywriter right but you were also writing but I had been a writer yeah. for most of my life and um, I was a writing major in college and um, most of my jobs previous to that were uh, were writing jobs. Um, I just for some reason got in my head that you know I needed to work with my hands or whatever to uh, <laughs> become a full person or I don't know. But a um, full person. Yeah. So, but previous to that, I had known um, Andrew Ferris, who you've seen on the vidcast before, um, the former pastor turned strategist. Yeah, That's yeah, the yeah. other alternative, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> Um, <laughs> be involved with the church in some way is <laughs> the real. Thing. But the uh, but I had worked with Andrew on various writing projects uh, several times before um, he went to CTC and before I went off to the organ shop and to whatever else I was doing. So I had this connection with him for a long time, where we had worked together in a writing capacity, and he knew what I could do, and I knew what he could do. And so when he came to CTC, I was, I think, front of mind for him in terms of who he wanted to hire as a copywriter here. And so basically, my hiring story boils down to he bugged Taylor until Taylor was forced to hire me. Literally, like, Andrew would like bi-weekly send us an email trying to convince us to hire Richard like uh -huh. and we didn't know who Richard was we weren't even really at the time hiring for a copywriter it was just like this guy will make us better he should be here and it was always like okay Andrew cool Andrew <laughs> tends to be a little bit off the wall persistent about everything so you sort of file that away yeah. but um, eventually we got to a place where we needed a copywriter and so it had become in our minds this persona had been so built up about who Richard was that I didn't even ever interview you. Uh -uh. Josh went and had lunch with you once. Yeah, yeah, we had an interview. And Josh, Josh is like, his interview style is like, I would say it's philosophical. It's a very, I don't know if you experienced <laughs> this, but it's like, Josh doesn't work in CTC, works for 4x400, so it's rarely tactical. So I would be shocked if you had any idea what you would actually be doing coming out of that interview. But no, not really. I mean, <laughs> We talked about how the salsa at the Rose Cafe was really good. Yeah, but, and that's what I'm saying. It can meander a little bit. Yeah, but, uh, but I mean, so I guess like the nitty gritty, if you will, of my hiring process was about a year before I was hired, I submitted a resume and cover letter mm. to you guys. Is and, that true? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never read it. And Josh gave, Josh like loved it. He was like, this oh, is really? great. Yeah. I, um, I made Interesting. a joke about my basketball shot at the end that oh. he thought was incredible. Mm. And, uh, but then... Um, I didn't get hired at that point, so about a year passed, and I was building my church organs or whatever, yep. and then you guys got in touch with me again, 
and I interviewed and came in. So, my in a sense, my interview process felt, from my perspective at this time, like a normal one. Right. Like I sent in a cover letter and resume. Yeah. I, I knew a guy at the place, yeah. so I had an in that way, and then I did an interview briefly, and then I got hired. Yeah. I was like, that's cool. Yeah. And then. I discovered what the interview process looked like for a lot of other people. Yeah, and, and it was far from that. Was, right? Yeah, it was a little different. Yeah, our interview process can be a little bit wonky, but uh, or a little intense. But I think the thing there, and I would say that probably 85% of our hires come from a referral network. They come from somebody who, at the very least, is introduced to us via somebody that we trust, right? It's the same thing, we talk about this with purchase decisions, right? Price and a recommendation from somebody you trust. Those things matter when hiring as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, it, so I guess the takeaway for that is, besides CTC, is, and you heard Richard say it, is that if you are a writer, write for your friends. If you are right. a mechanic, work on your friends' cars. If you do digital marketing, do digital marketing for your friends' brands. Because they exist in networks where what happens is they become a referral source for you. So whatever it is that you do, doing it and offering it into your community so that they become an advocate on your behalf is one of the great ways to get opportunities presented to you. Yeah. Um, and I think that ultimately is what Richard experienced is that Andrew had written with him. He had read his writing. He had worked on music with him. Like they, they had a sense by which he knew the skill that we needed and he knew who had it. And so he was able to bring it in. So that's the sort of the first tangible tip. So the point isn't necessarily to try and go and recreate a bunch of years of friendship with somebody here at CTC that obviously can't be done, but it's to think about using your network of friends to build advocates on your behalf so that when they encounter opportunities, they're in, they're in a position to refer you. Um, so that's one mechanism, right? Um, and Adrian actually has a similar overlap in that you were introduced to me via my brother, right? Which is a pretty good referral source. Obviously, that's about as close as you can get as an intro. But your journey was very different than Richard's, we'll say. So yeah. what's, what's your hiring story? Um, so, my, so I was an anthropology major and um, straight out of college worked in marketing. But really, that just boiled down to like social media management. Um, and nothing to do with like actual paid um, digital marketing on any platform. And so um, leading up, sort of, I was in this in-between stage where I was waiting tables at um, Cafe Gratitude and I was seven months pregnant and Casey's brother was like, hey, you should apply at my brother's company. And I was like, oh, it sounds awesome. Looked at the open positions and saw one of them was copywriting and I was like, cool, I love writing, I'll apply. <laughs> and so um, uh, my, Pretty soon after like my application was in, I got an interview with Taylor, and from what I felt like that print that went pretty well, um, went all right. I probably talked about myself too much, which is something you should not do. <laughs> um, but um, after that, he, you know, he walked me out and he said, "Cool, it's great talking to you. You'll, you'll hear from me in a couple days." And um, after that, he uh, he asked me to do a. Um, presentation. He said, come in and you'll present to a few of us. And um, I'm like, sweet. So he sends me a sort of um, assignment on a Google Doc and I worked on it for like way too long because I totally overanalyzed it. And um, I walk in to present on a Friday afternoon and turns out it wasn't just for a few people, it was for the entire Common Thread Collective, which at the time was probably almost 25 people. Um, and so I present in front of everyone and there was like an open forum after my presentation where <laughs> anyone could ask me any question ever. So I was completely put on the spot, walked out, felt pretty good about that too. And then Taylor said again, okay, cool. You'll hear, you'll hear from me in a couple days. Taylor like pretty much ghosted me for like up to two or three weeks after that. Um, <laughs> Including in, we ran into each other. Yeah, and we ran into each other at Great Mix and that was, that was entirely super, awkward. Super awkward. And so, um, so I followed up with an email just saying, hey, um, I haven't heard from you. I like, you know, what's up basically? I said <laughs> it a little bit more professionally, I hope. But um, Taylor replied and he said, hey, like as great as it was to meet you, basically you had a spelling error in your presentation and as a cop potential copywriter, that's just a huge red flag. Um, clients would totally get on our case about that. So um, unfortunately, we're gonna open up the interviews like for more comps because we're not really satisfied with the ones we've got yet. And so um, I emailed back and I was like completely apologetic and um, just said, hey, like what can I do to make it up to you basically? And Taylor said, 
I mean, no guarantees, but you could write us like a satirical apology letter that sort of highlights your creative writing. And so um, that was like, that was in the evening, and I think I was about to go out of town, so I wanted to get it, to get it done like as soon as possible. So that night I stayed up until about 1 a.m. writing a satirical apology letter <laughs> on a typewriter. It sounds terrible to hear it out loud, like I'm some sort of tyrant. <laughs> yeah, 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 completely yeah. just, um, but I wrote it on a typewriter because I was like, what's a more, you know, um, ironic way to write a apology letter for a spelling error than on a typewriter, which ended up having close to five or six spelling errors that I had to white out, but I didn't have white out, so I used paint, um, like white, like acrylic paint, I had to, yeah. So it was a whole thing. I think I rewrote it three times because typewriters are just impossible to get right the first time. So um, so that, I was busy the next day because I, I had a shift at the restaurant, so my husband hand delivered the it's letter to it Taylor at the office. Who are you? Oh, okay. <laughs> and then I received an email from Taylor the next day after he had read the letter, and the email had three emojis in it. It had the um, flame emoji, it had the scroll emoji, and the thumbs up emoji. Uh -huh. And then it said, thanks, talk soon, Taylor. And I was like, sweet. Um, he might still liked it because I got the flame emoji. Like, you know, that is like <laughs> as good as it gets. Cool. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, then um, I didn't hear from him again for like two or three weeks. And then I followed up four weeks before my due date, um, before, yeah, I was supposed to have my baby. And I said, hey, you're probably wondering why I'm still emailing you <laughs> being, you know, eight months pregnant. Um, I said, I assure you that this job is not something that I'm seeking like just for like a means to a financial end but rather like something I want to invest in super long term so therefore I'm willing to work for you for free for like 90 days and basically you have an entirely like you have the option to totally kick me out at the end of that 90 <laughs> days after working for free if you don't like me at the end of 90 days and so Taylor's like emails back probably pretty reluctantly because at that point I was just so annoying and then I come in the next, like the following Monday for a meeting with him and he says, hey, obviously you're super interested in this. I'd love to give you a shot, but I don't feel comfortable not paying you. So I'm gonna pay you like an- Follow in the law, people. <laughs> Follow the law. I'm gonna pay you like an intern wage um, hourly and, um, and we're gonna do sort of like a 90 day probation, probationary period where we have sort of a mutual, like if you're not, if you don't like this job, you can leave. If we don't like you, you can leave type thing. So I started working for Common Thread Collective like two days later and um, I, Richard and Amanda, they sort of trained me and I was on this like very much like shadowing, like it did feel like very much like an internship, but I was like so, so set on proving myself in this limited amount of time, right? Like four weeks literally and then I was gonna be out of commission for like a minimum of eight weeks. So um, within that, four weeks, it was actually like, it was actually like three and a half weeks in, um, Taylor throws like sort of this like last minute all company meeting and um, he, you know, he says, hey, like clearly at Common Thread Collective, um, our industry hasn't been around for very long, so it's hard to ha hire people based on experience. So we've come to sort of hire for effort and interest and, um, you know, Adrian has, has done that and so, um, we have offered her like a full-time position here and two months of paid maternity leave and it was just like the most epic it was an epic day obviously like for me but also just like the most epic testimony of how worth it it was for like me to ha like apply here um, and pursue this job because of the leadership that's in place so that's my story yeah and so the so the background to what's happening is I'm a terrible speller, so every time Adrian would present, I was like, oh, that was great. And then the copywriters would be like, mm, um, Thanks. there was a, yeah, it would be like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, excuse me, there's uh, over here on I slide had seven. One. Like, I had one. It wasn't well, like on this, multiple. All the, all the, the, but it was like on a, like a giant Yeah, it was word. on this, like, the, the yeah. huge word of the yeah. presentation. So that was the first time. So I was it like, was oh, sophisticated. The word was the word sophisticated. sophisticated. Yeah. yeah. So every time I'm like, oh, stoked. Like, great, we got somebody. And then they're like, oh, no. Um, so then the same thing with the letter, like there was, it was just like an incorrect use of, I don't know, some, something happened and every time I'm like, oh, look at this, this thing's fire. So like I sent those, the fire emojis before even showing it to anybody. <laughs> and then it was like, man, I don't know. Yeah. But well, it's um, interesting hearing that, that you had stayed up till 1 a.m. like writing it on a typewriter, that kind of makes sense. 
that there would be yeah. yeah yeah because it was like I was kind of reading like what what is this like, what am I looking at <laughs> and then within I think within like three or four days of you actually being hired on I, I was like oh she's awesome yeah like, she's really good at writing so I don't know so so the lesson there I think is so. I, I ran into yeah, Corey ran it. I mean, there was a lot of awkward exchanges along the way. Yeah, is that and on top of that, I was basically hunting down anyone that had like a mutual connection with Taylor for a referral. So that's I'd true. be like, I got calls Kaylee, for, yeah. Kaylee, can you please talk to Taylor and tell yeah. him that I'm awesome? Kaylee, you know like, me. A yeah. bunch of people just trying to like find connections. And I think like what what that triggers for me is when somebody is willing to do that. Like, like I don't think what we do is rocket science, right? Like I believe that intelligent people that put forward great effort can learn what we do and succeed at it. Like, it'd be one thing if we were heart surgeons, effort and interest probably wouldn't be enough, right? Like, mm -hmm. But there's a lot to be said for, I think, intelligent human beings who are willing to work hard and what the capacity is for them to succeed in what we do. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that the lesson there is that if you really want something, what are you willing to do for it, right? And I think what I see is people who think of that as, repeatedly messaging me on LinkedIn. Like, that is not effort and interest, that is annoying, right? But I think what was interesting about Adrian was that like, she understood those dynamics of the people whose opinions I would value, and she did go out of her way being super pregnant to work super hard and continue to repeatedly engage in something and not let her own mistakes or our perception of it discourage her from participating. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's easy to send a follow up after an interview. It's harder to pick up on something that you hear the person interviewing say that they love and figure out a way to bring them a gift. Like another great hire that I've had and experience is our friend Reed, where when he showed up, he had shopped the site of our clients and brought references to experiences that he had with the product before he even showed up. And so what I had seen was that he had real interest in the process of the thing he was going to engage in and he showed up ready to communicate that. He didn't, because oftentimes people think that they're just coming to talk about themselves and you heard Adrian reference this, but that's like, that's the least of what I'm interested in. Yeah, like I care about your passions and your future and like what your manager would say about you and those sorts of things. But really what I want to see, I want that to come to life in the way that you behave. And so I think that let that be sort of encouraging to you that if you are applying and you haven't heard back, like the answer isn't resend the email. Like we got the email, I promise you, we get all of them. We open them, we look at the cover letters, we look at the resumes and it wasn't enough, right? It was insufficient at that point. So don't retry the same mechanism. Go follow me on Twitter, see what I talk about, engage me in a conversation, like before you then hit me with the, oh, and I applied, like create some sort of additional touch point in which I can see the thing that you like and do come through. Chris Johnson, who's one of our hires, showed up to our craft nights and had conversations in a room where I went, wow, that dude stands out when he talks. Like, mm -hmm. he's really intelligent and can hold a room. And, that, and so that's how we pursued him. So find ways to engage with the people, I think, even beyond just the application process. Yeah. What else? What else would you guys throw out as ways to, to think about cutting through the noise? Yeah, I feel like what, what ties our experience together, kind of, is that we both, now me less intentionally, so <laughs> created right. Uh, circumstances under which though the people who were in charge of hiring got to know a little bit of us as a person and as somebody who they would have to spend time with right on some you're gonna see on a daily basis right and uh, um, I think that when Adrienne came on we all kind of had a sense of who she was like, right we could right. all picture her we all sort of had a sense of what our personality was going to be when right. she came in and all that kind of thing. And I think what the mistake it sounds like a lot of people are making is telling you over and over again why they'd be good at the job. Right. And, and it's just one of those things that you can't really tell somebody in yeah. a convincing way. Right. You have to show them. Yes. And not only do you have to show them that you'd be good at the job, you have to show them that you'd be a good person. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. the, so uh, one of the, I've seen this, there's a, an application that went around the internet for a while where um, a guy who was applying for an e-commerce position basically turned his resume into a PDP page, uh -huh. right? That's awesome. yeah. Like to me, that's, that's a thought that would say like, what do these people do? How can I communicate in a way that would show that I understand and I would be a fit for this community, right? More so than just trying to think like, I hate resumes. I fundamentally, like they are, 
horrible to me. Like everything about the, the structure of them, like it's all templatized, it's all the same, it all blends together. It's so hard to make it feel different at all, right? Um, oh, that plane get you? No, there. Ratings graph. Uh, sorry. Uh, oh, the ratings graph. Yeah, like this whole thing that creatives do where it's like, on Illustrator, I'm like a four and a half bars out of full bar. Like, wait, like, it, <laughs> like these things that just don't mean anything to me versus to your point, helping me to understand who you are in context and allowing me to make the determination that you would be good at the job. Like, don't, to your point, don't tell me that, show me that in some capacity, I think is, mm -hmm. is super interesting. Mm -hmm. What else, what else would you throw out? I think like, to the point of not talking about yourself like in, in an interview, um, ask the person that is interviewing you questions about, you know, not just like, hey Taylor, what's your, like, you know, what are you doing? What do you like doing on the weekends? But right. like really, really engage in um, sort of this long term, like express that you're interested long term in the business by asking questions like, hey, what's your vision for Common Thread Collective in five years? Like right. express that you're A, a forward thinker, and then B, just really interested in sort of like the long term growth of the company because yep. that's what hopefully you're going to be there for. And, you're going to outgrow the position eventually. Like eventually you're going to take on more responsibility and you're going to outgrow sort of the um, initial position that you applied for. So you don't want to just be like position specific in your questions, but you want to be like big picture um, in the questions that you ask yeah. and, and really just engage in like um, long term, like be, be super interested in the long term health of the business because um, that's what they're hiring you for. Yeah. They're, they're hiring you to add to that culture and to add to that um, health. So, yeah, um, that's great. I mean, I've had two phone interviews recently, and <clears throat> a couple of those that really stood out were people that were really interested in how Common Thread was doing. Like, are you succeeding? What is working? What is not? What could be better? How do like? It was almost as if they were priming themselves for how to succeed in the role versus how to get the role. Like they were tr genuinely interested in what we were looking for or what the processes would be to eval almost in this way that was like they were evaluating for themselves whether they would be great at it. And what that reflects to me is an understanding of your own skills. What I hate to feel is that you're saying anything I want to hear in order to get the position. Like that's not ultimately gonna be good for either of us, but if you can hear from me what it is that we need and then overlay where you think you fit within the context of that, that helps to create a match that's, that's really powerful. Um, so yeah. That's good, I appreciate you guys. I think your stories are great. We love having you here at CTC, obviously. And hopefully that's helpful a little bit to give you a sense of some of the journey people have taken to end up here at the Common Thread Collective and how maybe you can sort of take some of those tips. Um, stop spamming me on LinkedIn um, <laughs> and maybe think about ways that uh, you could cut through the noise and hopefully make it to Panio's desk and then ultimately maybe right here to the couch to tell yeah. your story someday. <laughs> so thank you, Thanks. enjoy. See ya.